Good morning. Uh, my name is Nicole Eaton. I am well, soon to be 49 years old. I have started my journey with being diagnosed with Lyme uh, just basically in, since March. Um, it's been a long road. Uh, I started out in healthcare down in uh, basically 97 uh, at the old All Children's Hospital uh, in CVICU. Trauma uh, went into organ procurement and transplant with LifeLink of Florida. Did tissue banking with them as well. So being in medicine, uh, I think I was a little bit more, or at least I thought, I was a little bit more well-versed in handling uh, diagnosis of Lyme. And it's not until recently diving into it, realizing how long I've been sick, chronically ill. Uh, they've done muscle biopsies a lot earlier uh, in my life and said I had a muscle disease and in learning at the Spinagal Wellness Institute, um, the wealth of knowledge that Dr. Spinagal has imparted to me is just amazing. And it also is a little bit um, frightening in the fact that it's been such a long journey of being misdiagnosed and having over 30, 40 specialists, whether they're nephrologists, things being sent off to women and children's uh, metabolic disorders in Boston, uh, Brigham, Dana-Farber, um, Duke University, just to name a few uh, along my journey. And in researching, once we found out from, of course, the antiquated, just a Western blot testing for Lyme um, has pointed out there's so many missing pieces that you can be sick with. But in researching doctors that actually treat Lyme or a Lyme literate physician, as they, I think, are now called, um, trying to find one that is, I, I guess, on the same page as a patient um, trying to research and looking for a cure, which for a chronic Lymer, you know, they like to label us as kind of crazy, you know, and they make you think that you're crazy and you start second guessing yourself. And I, I guess I'm very blessed to have a medical background to sometimes have more knowledge than the average patient just walking in off the street. And, you know, unfortunately they don't have the knowledge base to question, to research, to ask. Um, I've gotten, you know, different opinions on, of course, the course of care when researching different physicians in the area, as well as throughout the United States, which led me, I guess, into my own backyard, which I'm very lucky that this institute is very close because I live locally here in Tarpon Springs. And to get to Spinagle, it's only 15 to 20 minutes on the back roads, given the time of day. And there's a lot that goes in involved in the care and testing, and they go above and beyond the normal standards of care for testing here, which is what brought me here. Because in researching and finding other physicians, I would have a laundry list of let's just switch antibiotics, IV antibiotics every 28 days. Because when you research your insurance, whether it's Blue Cross Blue Shield, United Healthcare, Aetna, I could go on and on they are following standards of care that is very antiquated and of course set by our CDC and our NIH, which only usually follow oral antibiotics. And if it's oral antibiotics versus IV antibiotics, you will be lumped into 28 days because I know that that's what my standard of care for this certain insurance that I carry will allow. And unfortunately, anybody that has been down this journey, or is just starting this journey. It is a gut-wrenching, take everything you've got in your arsenal to fight, whether it's insurance, billing, your own researching and knowledge and different care plans that different physicians want to present to you. And, you know, it is ultimately your comfort level with the team that has to take care of you at the end of the day. Because if I would have chosen another 
avenue in another physician in another area, they could have put me in. Pretty much I would probably end it up in intensive care because doing their care plan of let's just switch IV antibiotics every 28 days would have killed my gut and anybody that knows the co-infections that follow Lyme with whether it's candida, whether it's overgrowth, gut not working, and you go ahead and just do oral IV antibiotics, it's going to set off a storm in your body that once you start it, it's very hard to retract those things out of your system. So I've only been here, I think this is going on my second, second week. Um, I know we've been, I've been pushing the team to be very aggressive with me only because I'm a little bit strong will and wanting to get at it with things, different modalities. And I think the acceptance here with our practitioners, our physicians, our nursing team, our billing, our ancillary staff is very much in tune with our patients here and with me, which is very welcoming. When you walk in the door, um, you feel that you are validated, that you are listened to, uh, that nothing that you bring to the table is going to look, you know, they're gonna look at you like you have three heads which I think is so important today. And also having the autonomy to be able to speak to using different treatment plans, um, which they're very open to here. So I, I encourage people to do their research, um, to not feel crazy that you, know, you are heard you're definitely listened to, you're valued. Um, I, and learning most of the employees here have been here for many, many years with Dr. Svenoval, which also spoke volumes to what type of practice he has developed and set up for these many, many, many years. Um, so I guess in summary, I'm, I'm just blessed to be here and starting my treatment and hoping that as I go along through this, we will be able to turn this around or bring more of an awareness of how to circumvent the antiquated old way of treating the Lymes, the chronic Lymes. And that's why I hope to be a voice and, and be here to at least show other patients that are searching, that are looking for somewhere to come for they believe on the verge of some of the top best modalities and going forward and treating, whether you're going for SOTs, whether you're looking at your PET scans. And for me, I'd never had a PET scan before. I've had multiple MRIs never had anything show up there because hyper resonance or you know they couldn't see things that normally you know on your pet scan it's completely in color and a different way of looking at it and when it's there in color there's no question to me as to why i was having the symptoms that i was having and i'm no longer feeling alone in this fight and it being labeled as a, a crazy. So hopefully that's going to help others maybe find their place here at Spoon